Welcome to the Fifth Trooper Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Fifth Trooper Podcast. My name is Jay Shalansky. Joining me this week is Evan Bullris. Hey, how's it going? And Zach Berry of the Fifth Trooper fame. Oh, <laughs> nice. oh wait, wrong night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've decided that you're from Fifth Trooper fame now, not from uh, whatever you, yeah, whatever you had going before. <laughs> yeah, whatever it was, I don't, I don't even remember myself. <laughs> what day is it? So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wait, I used to have a blog. Uh, so yeah, so we we uh, we got Zach on because um, Invader League is going on, and and Zach just started. Uh, registrations for invader league and to be honest with everyone out there um evan and i were going to kind of skip invader league and not talk about it um we've been trying to move more to the center of legion um and not focus as highly on the competitive and let scoundrels focus on that but uh zach you brought up a good a couple of good points today and so you know i thought it'd be good to have you on and kind of kind of tell us what you're doing with invader league Oh man, uh besides the uh the big headache, it's been a big success already. And um yeah, the first thing I, you know, wanted to bring up was uh, you know, and we talked about this earlier was, you know, you have the experience with Neo and running Neo and running yeah. a big event like this and all the ins and outs that go with it. Um so we just wanted to talk about that really and, you know, it's been great uh the first 48 hours, I think we got to extend it to 192 participants, Good which golly. is pretty insane because you we try to do is have a backup person for each division that you end up doing um so we're sticking with 192 it's going to be uh 32 groups uh with uh, a 64 person single eliminations but the uh the most important thing that we want to hammer home is that you know it's just a great great community building event yeah so let's so for those of you if maybe you're newer to the podcast or newer to legion in general uh, Invader League has been going on for a few years now. It's it's a all online uh, Legion tournament that we do on ta- through Tabletop Simulator, and a lot of the content creators out there uh, will stream it on their channel. And so what what's happening this year is it's in in the past, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I feel like it's been relegated mostly to like the highly competitive uh, group of people. And I think that what Zach's trying to promote this year is that because of what's happening with, you know, the pandemic and all that stuff, that this is a good time if you, you know, John Smith at home uh, are interested in playing Legion and haven't been able to play at your local store, that this is going to be a good opportunity for you. Like Zach, you know, in our, before we start recording, you were saying like, Hey, I, I had this guy just bought all these B ones or B twos and has them at home and hasn't been able to put them on the table yet because of the quarantine. But this is your opportunity to get out into the community and play. Yeah. As someone that like tries to play like two games a week, we'll call it. So going from two to zero is crazy, right? But then you have somebody that just picked up the game and has never played. And they must be, you know, wanting to getting onto the table so bad. Um, and that's why a lot of the things that I've tweaked with Invader this year is more geared towards the newer folks. Because, you know, we're up to about 250, maybe up to 260 now of participants, you know, registrate, you know, registrations. And you have to think a lot of those people are either newer to the game or maybe newer to the online part of the game. Um, the competitive scene is, you know, a good amount of folks, but it's probably not as big as you might think. And um, I want to try and make sure that the event is good for both new people, you know, the ones that also try to play casual, competitive, and the competitive. So it's multi-tiered, and that's the difficulty of trying to balance it. Um, but that's why, like, I'm – going with the list lock this year but i'm trying to make it with like a wild card slash mulligan we'll call it because you don't want somebody to come into the league that's never played the game build a list and then like three games later it's not what they wanted to do but at the same time i took the feedback from last season and i didn't want people coming in with droids like we're talking about and getting list sniped which is you know because that's the thing about invader league you can build a, you used to be able to build a list for every game and i didn't want them coming in and saying seeing six ion snowtroopers per game because the, <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean like the competitive 
The competitive <laughs> <laughs> relationship. <laughs> no, no, hold on. I'm not. I'm That's not saying. Funny. I'm not saying that Ion's good, but yeah. <laughs> I just don't want the negative play experience for people coming in. No, man, that's fair. I mean, because we're using cards like um, Droid Poppers, right? Like the three-point um, ion grenades, right? Those are illegal? Yes, they are, yeah. And having a, it turns out if you're, you go your droids and someone pulls an army with nothing but units with those grenades, that could feel real bad real quick. Yeah, absolutely. And we're trying to mitigate that as best as we can while also trying to keep the personality of Invader League and also trying to keep the integrity of it a tournament – so it's really a lot of moving pieces that I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm not saying that anything I'm making here is the right decision. It could very well be the wrong decision. But you know what? Let's try it out, you know? That's a real good way to sell it, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm I'm, th- I'm not saying what I'm doing is right, but I'm doing it. So, <laughs> well, it's, you know, it. it's, uh, it's always easy to criticize somebody after they make a decision, whether mm-hmm. it was right or wrong, right? Uh and, you know, it's like the shoulda, woulda, coulda uh, that's so popular these days. Uh, but no, man, uh, I think a decision is better than no decision. So you, you're trying out some stuff and we'll give it a shot. And, you know, uh, worst case, we just don't do it next year, right? I mean, yeah, it's not like, exactly. or even not even next year, right? Next uh, whatever season, season. Yeah. like it's not that long, right? Um, yeah, so it's gonna go from May fourth to about July. Oh yeah, sixteenth or something like that. Yeah, and then how it's been working is that it's been like a rotation. It's been like Invader League will happen, and then uh, Endless David will run Yavin Base Team League, and then Invader will come back in, or you know maybe some new turn- tournaments will start formulating. You know where we can just kind of like divide it across the year. Um, but yeah, it's again, it's something that we're implementing this season. It doesn't have to be back next season, but why not try it? See where it goes. You know, um, I've got some big shoes to fill with LJ. You know, he did a great job with the first four seasons and LJ, of course, is LJ. Um, and I didn't really want to make too many tweaks to what he had put in, you know, into place. But um, we took the feedback from, you know, from prior seasons and we're going to try something, you know? No, I agree. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and I would say, uh, you know, for those of you that are maybe a little bit more casual or aren't as into the competitive, I think Invader League uh, really has minimal downside for you. And what I mean by that is, like, going to LVO or coming to Northeast Open is you got to, like, buy a ticket or drive or get a hotel and you have all these expensive expenses and, like... Um, all this kind of like pressure on you to, you know, finish the tournament and to play and to do well, because I spent all this money and I'm away from my family. Well, I, you know, this, the pressure isn't as high here because you're just home on your computer playing and you just have to figure out when you can carve out a few hours. And so, you know, for those of you that maybe have been nervous or, you know, maybe some of the community has scared you off a little bit on Invader League, I would say, you know, give it a shot. Law, try to sign up and and maybe at least just play through the first rounds and see how you you know how you feel about it. And you know, I've been I've played in the past before, both uh, Invader and Team League. And you know, sometimes like life just gets in the way, and you just kind of drop your games, and you're like, yeah, man, I can't. I'm sorry, you win. I can't play this game. And then you just move on with your life. You know, you're not you're not out anything. Uh, if anything, you you meet some new people. You get to you get to play the game, and and you know this year, I think Zach's focus is more on the community and about just p- being able to play the game in this environment, and and not so much about you know the hyper competitive league that it that it c- could be. No, I agree. Yeah, because my plan was uh, to build kind of a goofy list with some uh, some stuff that's not out on in real life yet, and. Uh, just kind of have fun with it. Like, uh, I'm not playing one of my 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 quote unquote sweaty lists. Uh, uh, it's more of just like a, uh, like I'm I'm using Cad Bane, right? Like he's we've got one card and like one piece of his gear. That's it. <laughs> it's the only things that are, are legal for him plus his actual stack card. It's all um, need. Yeah, right. Get the give, give me the one punch with that uh, one punch man with his gauntlet, right? Um, and so yeah, he's uh he's not great. But I'm playing him because I I've been since they announced him I've wanted to play him, uh you know even if I get rolled it's fine I'm okay with it because I just want to try Cad Bane man so I'll get a bunch of games in even if I get like stomped each time 
Um, that's just more experience I get with the unit. So when I actually get to play it for realsies, I'll at least have some idea of what's going on. That's why I'm kind of looking at it. Yeah, I, geez, I keep going back and forth. And what I found in like the past with, I just don't have the time sometimes for it. And, you know, I, I can't like get my schedule lined up with my opponents sometimes. And that's me personally. It has, it's not a slight at uh, Invader League on any, on any uh, level, but I don't know. I've been thinking about maybe, I don't, I don't know. I'm still back and forth. <laughs> I, I'm I like, don't oh, know. Oh, oh, God, I don't know. Listen, Jake, like, I want to do you it. You might be but... my boss here, but there's no favoritism on the there. wait list. <laughs> I said, Jay might be my boss. <laughs> just let me know. There's no favorit, no, no favoritism on that wait list. Um, but um, oh, I thought yeah, you said I mean, there was. Fa- That's not what you told no. me yesterday in private. No, I'm just <laughs> I gotta go delete those. Um, so, <laughs> oh man, some really good points that both of you brought up. Um, I want to tell the people that maybe are on the fence about doing it. Um, The first time that I played was Invader League Season 3. And I had the game for only about three or four months at that point, I want to say. And um, I got into a group, group, US Group 11. Uh, I remember the number because I'm honestly lifelong friends with a lot of the people from that group. Um, It was a great group. Don't mind you. It was, you know, it was Nima. It was Keegan Evans. Um, Nima! Yeah. Nima! <laughs> you don't speak that name on oh, this no. podcast. P- PTSD. Um, <laughs> you know, Keegan Evans, um, Esma Trokin on the Discord, and uh, Darkling. And uh, I'm probably forgetting somebody here. Um, but it was just a great group. And I-, I learned so much about what the community meant by the first time I played Invader League. And then here I am two seasons later taking over for LJ. Um but speaking of Nima and PTSD, the other point I want to bring up is that, you know, the three of us here, you know, Jay, Evan, you know, and I, we tend to get competitive at times and, you know, bring sweaty oh, sure. lists and, and find ourselves going through that rabbit hole. But at the end of the day, I, I, I think the three of us understand Arnie Palmer cracks. Um, <laughs> but I think the <laughs> no. I think the three Damn of us it, understand <laughs> <laughs> that this is more about the community than it is about the competitive scene at the end of the day, even when, I, even when our hands are sweaty, sweaty, sweaty. Yeah, I would say more now than, than ever, right? And I think because we're all stuck uh, in this situation, right, that we, we – everyone, everyone that's listening right now is in the same situation. And so across the world, which is crazy, so – you know, I think this uniquely is different than all the other Invader Leagues. And I'm, I don't mean that as a slight or anything to LJ or anyone else. I'm just saying because of the situation the world's in, that's a different – it's different now than it's ever been. And so this is an opportunity for all people, um, competitive or casual competitive, to kind of get in and start playing because this – it might be – I think it's going to be much different this year. Yeah, I tend to agree. And again, and that's why I'm trying to find the perfect balance that doesn't exist because there is no perfect balance. But I'm trying to find my personal perfect balance of working on, you know, honestly, like three sides of a ball. You know what I mean? There's just so many different things going on. Um, but I can tell you that, yeah, um, with the signups, there's a lot of like spike in numbers. Like um, the European group, I think, had 37, no, 33. Three members last season sign up, and they're already up to fifty-two or fifty-three, and um, you know that goes to show that you know they're home and they're looking for something to do, and I'm trying to bring that to them. You know, yeah, yeah, and I think I think this is good, and I think um, yeah, I, th- I think uh, I think this is good. <laughs> I think it's going to be great. I'm I don't know. I'm still on the fence if I'm signing up, and it's it's just a personal thing I got to figure out here, but. You know, Evan? You yeah, know? I sure do know, bud. <laughs> do you, though, Evan? Evan, do you? I think I know. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So besides I... that, Zach, what else uh, What else have you been up to game-wise? <sighs> um, actually, I was actually painting some terrain yesterday. Um, I finally got the urge to do some hobbying. Um, it's like some days you say to yourself, I'm going to paint. And then like 8 o'clock rolls around and when you – put the time aside that you're going to do it. And you're like, I'm not going to paint. Um, but it's, it's been good. Um, I played a game a couple days ago. That one was, you know, pretty good as well. 
Um, got my clones on the table. Uh, I wish it was a real table, but TTS will have to do as we know. Um, and yeah, honestly, Invader League has taken up a lot of my time, just you know, uh, setting it up for everybody. There's a lot of ins and outs. I have like, I have like 14 windows up on my computer, and they're all dedicated to stuff that I'm doing. It's almost like a job, really. Um, and so it's been keeping me busy, which is good. Yeah, man, it must be a lot of work trying to organize all that. Like, I saw how many people signed up and, like, Oof. putting them in all the pods and everything must be nuts. I uh, I think I underestimated how much work it was, um, <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be quite honest. I've been preparing since uh, December, I want to say. Okay. And here we are in April, and I still feel unprepared. But I, I, <laughs> well, I know I am prepared, but I feel unprepared, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, same thing for when we did – Northeast Open last year. I had months and months. I mean, Evan knows. You know, I put planning and planning for months, and uh, and even like the, the even the, the second day, like we were in the middle of the tournament. And I'm like, I'm not prepared for today. Like, like you know, like it just. I don't think that ever goes away, especially if you want to do it right. Yeah, and I think that just kind of plays into our personality type, correct? Like we just think we can yeah. please everybody and do something a perfect way, and then you start thinking to yourself in the back of your mind. I can't do this perfectly. It's not going to go the way I want it. And it's just like a mind over matter thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't really like when it's stuff I come up with or want to do, I don't do well with compromise. Cause I'm like, no, I can make this work this way. And then, <laughs> you know, and then external s sources are like, nah, that's not going to go that way. And then I start to lose my mind a little bit, but yeah. So uh, Evan, what have you been up to buddy? Uh, let's see. I've uh, been, heavily investing in two miniature games while I wait for new stuff to buy for Legion. Uh, Go on. I've been, I got all my uh, Fallout uh, Wasteland Warfare stuff in. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty, I'll be doing an unboxing for that and uh, kind of a overview of what comes with it uh, on a video soon. Um, hopefully I'll get some of that done this weekend. Um, pretty excited for that because it comes with, the train is just about Legion scale, like real close. So, so my goal was, uh, if the game's cool, and then I can buy the train and have it for Fallout, but also have it for Legion, so you can fight on like a uh, a Fallout themed board, which sounded mm. super cool because it it wants yeah, line of yeah. sight train and things like that too. And actually, it has uh, barricades as well, uh, and rules rules for barricades. So the barricades are just about the same size as Legion, so you can even have like barricades without having to stick uh, Star Wars ones in there, huh. which is which is kind of interesting. Cool. Um, yeah. I just put an order in. I pre-ordered the uh, the new Elder Scrolls miniature game, um, so I got the the bundle. They're changing to hard plastic. Uh, that comes with a few of the factions, and so the the point I'm doing with all these is they're single player slash co-op miniature games that also have like a versus if you want. Like in the Fallout one, you could do like uh, Super Mutants versus Institute, or uh, you know like the Soul Survivor group uh, versus uh, Brotherhood of Steel, or something like that. Um, but it's actually meant to be played either like solo or cooperatively. So you could buy the um, like the actual Fallout starter box and split the good guys, and then have the AI cars play the bad guys, and you and a buddy or yourself could just play the game and still get that miniature experience. So that's that's, that's cool, pretty man. cool. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to the Skyrim one because uh, it has a whole campaign book, and uh, they actually sell. Uh, uh, the first dun uh, in in Skyrim, when you get out of the first Helgen, uh, when you get out of the first little town that gets attacked by the dragon, and you go up to the first dungeon to get your your dragon shout, uh, they sell all that uh, terrain, so you can actually replay. They can have the dragon board going through and fighting like the drug is it drugger? They're zombies. They're they're weird names. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I know you can have like a, uh, comes with the skeletons and the dragonborn, uh, and you can fight through. That scenario, but it's really meant for co-op. Uh, the one of the designers reached out to me. And he was kind of talking about uh, like the the vision of the game. Because I asked him, I'm like, well, how how is this supposed to be played? Like, am I going to play it, buy it for verses, and have like the storm cloaks versus the uh, imperials, and be really disappointed because it's meant not meant to do that kind of thing? He's like, no, do single or co-op, uh, and then go from there. So um, yeah, I'll have some videos up. That doesn't come out till May, but I'll have the Fallout stuff hopefully up soon. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to see that and uh, get that on. That'll be on our YouTube channel. Yep. 
but yeah, that's funny. So, so one of my kids has been playing Skyrim and every day he like comes downstairs and it's like, dad, dad, I just beat Skyrim on punch only. And then, <laughs> the next day, yeah, the next day he's like, dad, dad, I just beat it on pickaxe only. And I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> It's just, uh, it's funny how that game uh, has, like, I mean, how many years ago did that come out? Because I oh remember it. At oh, least, man. like, 10 or something yeah. at this point. It's old. Yeah, and, like, and for him to, like, he's he's sitting there still playing it. Like, he's got it on every, you know, he has, on everything he has, he bought, he bought Skyrim for everything. Because he's like, well, but, Dad, on this one, you can still, like, put in the cheats and stuff. But on this <laughs> one, you can't. And I'm like, okay, man. And then he's like, and this one has all of the stuff already open and ready to go. But this one, you got to unlock it. I'm like, okay. So that's <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be interesting because they talked about uh, the different waves. Like they're going to go to uh, Oblivion and Morrowind, so it's going to be like a whole Elder Scrolls series. And uh, what's interesting uh-huh. with the Fallout one too is they um, like they had a video. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was in 2018 when they showed like uh, they just released a course at the time, and they're like, "This is what's coming." And Fallout 76 was announced, but nobody knew Oof. what it was yet. Uh-huh. And so one of the guys is like, "Oh, I bet you're excited for the new Fallout." Like, yeah, hey, more you know, more Fallout, more stuff to do. And then, <laughs> oof, right? But the, yeah. um, the the cool thing was, they're like, yeah, we're going to Fallout 1 and 2 with the game as well. So you'll actually get to uh, have, like, named characters from those games, as well as Fallout 3 and Fallout Tactics. And they're, like, hitting everything with it. Uh, so if you like a Fallout game, there'll be a miniature somewhere in there that represents, like, that era of the Fallout universe. So even if you're not a fan of 4, like, 3 is coming, 1 and 2 are coming. Um, they even made a Liberty Prime, which uh, if you've played three or even a little bit of four, it's that giant mech. And so for Legion scale, it's actually it's about an ATST and a half big. Uh, oh, wow. Of the, yeah, it's a giant model. Like, uh, and it's got the football throw pose, except it's got a little nuke in its hand. And uh, it, <laughs> I am excited to yell like uh, all the like the pro American slang he used <laughs> when he when he just nuked uh, enemies as you <laughs> woke them up. But yeah, the model is gorgeous. So um, yeah, see some of that coming. Um, I'm mostly just doing this to kill time until I can actually, uh, you know, play Legion IRL again. Um, yeah. But uh, that said, like, if it's cool, it'd be it'd be nice sometimes when sometimes only two of us show up to the shop. It, our shop goes from anywhere from two people to 14 people on a Friday night. Uh, but if two people show up and you don't really want to play, like, you know, uh, a versus game, you could just pop out this and, like, have a co-op game where you're both getting to, like, play together. And it doesn't feel like, you know, you can kind of just get a cool, like, hey, we're both winning or we're both losing kind of kind of scenario out of it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I've been, I don't know, I've been looking at, I've been working on a bunch of different stuff for Legion, but also uh, I'm really interested in playing that God tier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that looks good. And then uh, that other one, I always forget the name of this, Evan, the one with Bruce Lee in it. Oh, Unmatched, yeah. On match, yeah, that looks good too. I really want to see that play that. So yeah, I uh, I thought about one of these days just like dropping it off at your house because you. So <laughs> Jay lives between where I work and where I live. Uh, so that's actually how we started doing the podcast. Was I would he's like, hey, you know, can you come over? I'm like, yeah, it's literally on my way home. Um, yeah, but uh, I can just drop it off and you can play with one of your kids. Uh, <laughs> just leave it on like a, a, a do not go outside bag kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well when you, i had to pick up some uh, a camera to do the video and uh there's just a bag sitting on his porch <laughs> with like, full, like easter candy and then he's just like waving from me inside the window i'm like hey jay <laughs> yeah that was that was funny uh we we wanted to see how much how further we could take that but that was as far as we got <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd be like, yeah, it's out by the trash cans. I'm like, come on, man. That's not (laughs) a joke. Oh, Oh, that's funny. But uh, all right. Hey, so we got we got Zach and Evan here, right? Why don't we play a little try by trash? Do it. You ready? Ready. Let's do it. Do uh, do Zach first. He's new. He needs to be in here. Oh, man. uh, Punch. Try by trash. Okay, I'm good. It's it's hard to do over uh, uh, over. Yeah, yeah, we can't chant it together. Uh, (laughs) 
so for for our listeners, if you didn't hear our last episode where we do try buy trash, it's like F Mary Kill. And so basically uh you can try a unit, which means you can only have it once, one one match, you can have that unit. You can buy a unit, which means you have that access to that unit forever in all your future matches. Or you have to trash a unit, which means you can never play that unit again. They're gone. It's gone forever for, to you. That's dead to you. Uh, so, all right. So let's do the first one. I'm, I'll do the chant. We we tried to do this, uh, Evan and I, the other day together, and it just it didn't work. Yeah. So, <laughs> it was a real mess. So I'll, I'll do the chant. So try, buy, trash, try, buy, trash, try, buy, trash. Ready, Zach? I felt weird sitting there while you did that, but yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. Cassian K2SO. Cad Bane, OP Luke. Operative Ugh. Luke. Yep. Try one, buy one, trash one. Uh, all right. Well, all right. We'll start we'll start with the easy one. Uh, I don't play I don't play droids. Uh I didn't even build a single droid. In fact, uh the droids go onto the bases of my clone troopers as debris. So we will trash Cad Bane. Even no. Though, no. Um, <laughs> he was my buy. Uh, he was my buy. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to go with try op Luke. Um, okay. Simply because I have commander Luke potentially in a, available to me. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to keep uh, Cassian and K2. Ooh, we're going to buy. buy. We're going to buy. Sorry. Buy. What's up? What's buy. with your love affair with Cassian and K2SO? Uh, so is there something scandalous going on between the three of you? I love those. I love those two characters. Like my three characters are Luke, Cassian, and, and Thrawn. And Cassian, I don't know why I just I always gravitated to him in Rogue One, and then you got K two with his just loose lips and hitting you with the sarcasm. It's just so good, and um, mm. man, they look like a lot of fun. So I'm I'm excited to get them eventually. All right, Evan, are you ready for I yours? Am. I'm ready. Try, bye, trash, try, bye, trash, try, bye, trash. Tauntauns, Ugh. clone phase two troopers. Okay. Or an AAT. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Uh, okay. Uh, tsh- buy the AAT. Uh, it's just so good. It's just so good. Um, it feels like an actual tank. You put it on the table, and then people are actually scared of it. Uh, they can't just ignore it. Uh, it. It can die. Like It has red dice and nine health, which is a lot, but sometimes just roll blanks and sometimes Z sixes roll like five crits. It's just mm-hmm. the way of the world. Um, I like it because it feels so many rolls and the model looks dope. So in by, uh, I'm going to try, let's see, try the tons. I think, uh, I, I like the fact that they're mounted, uh, combatants. I want to see more of that in the game. I love the do back. I love the fact that, uh, Okay, so I got a lot of flack last time. Um, it's not <laughs> cavalry. It's I can't say the word right, so that's why I... Uh, uh, cavalry. cavalry. No, don't help him. <laughs> Damn it, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that. So I said I was saying the place and not the actual unit, and I got a lot of, like, took me out of it, sad comments. And I'm like, okay, sorry, dog. Like, jeeps. Um, so... Uh, I like them just because they're mounted. I think that's cool. And crashing in with a bunch of horsemen is always what I wanted in any miniature game. But every game I bought into where they existed, they were like $100 for one unit of them, not 25 So I can actually afford them. So try. And Trash Phase 2s, um, I'll never own one at this rate. So uh, I'm not putting my hopes up of like ever seeing one like in a store to buy. So I'm just going to say Trash because uh, TTS is the only place I'll actually ever get to get one. Oh, oh man, that's funny. That's good. All right, Zach, are you ready? Yes. Try, buy, trash, try, buy, trash, try, buy, trash. Arc troopers, BX droids, and shore troopers. Oh, this one's easy for me. Um, right. we're gonna trash the BX droids again. I don't play droids. <sighs> um, I'm I'm Monster. gonna tra- <laughs> Evan. <laughs> Counter argument, Evan. Counter argument. <laughs> um, buying the BX droids because they are by far some of the coolest modeling we've seen in the game. That also, is true. Also, they look pretty dope overall with their cards and their ability to go swords <laughs> or sniper. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I don't even know how to counter that voice. Um, <laughs> Andy, that's me. my uh, sweaty neckbeard voice. <laughs> Excuse is. me, Zach. You don't there understand. is no counter. <laughs> um, I'll try. I'll try shore troopers, uh, and I'm definitely buying those arc troopers. Uh, oh man, arcs are good on paper, and yeah, the models look fantastic as well. Um, they just look really fun to use. Yeah, they're super cool. Like. I, I I can't wait for the day that I get to have uh, Rex with a jetpack and then them with jetpacks just jump over a hill and just start like gunslingering uh, all over the place and just having like, this awesome like shock team. Oh well, that you know what you just said that and I just got in my head that I need Rex on a physical jetpack, so now I need to buy another Rex so I can modify him onto a jetpack. All right. Cool. Uh, done. Easy. <laughs> well, you can rip your bobas off, or you can uh, you take an arc trooper, right? You buy another box and you just put Rex's top half on it. And done. yeah, I just yeah. went from buying three to four. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Evan. Yep. Are you ready? Uh huh. Try by trash. Try by trash. Try by trash. Try by trash. Bud Light Lime. Oh no. White Claw. Oh no. Or spiked Arnold Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> my tiny <spiked> pommies. <laughs> Ooh, so I'm gonna switch that Bud Light to the Bat Blue Light Lime. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah that's so that's the actually one. what I drink because it's uh, I get six tall boys for six bucks. Um, that's what it was. That was that's what it was. I forgot. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. The Bat Blue <laughs> Lime, yeah, you... White Claw, or spiked Arnie Palmy. <laughs> oh, Ooh, man. um. So I think I'm going to keep the uh, Labatt Blue Light Limes because of the, the immense value it gives me. And then when I'm walking out to my car during the quarantine with like three sets of six of them, the looks people get of me because there's no bags anymore. So I'm just arm fulling. I'm like the only one in the store and I come out. Everyone's in their car waiting for me to leave. They just stare at me as I'm like, you know, don't act like you're not impressed as I go to my car. So, so for for everyone to catch up on that joke here in new york they've banned plastic bags yeah. so if you don't bring a bag into the store you're walking out with no bags so, <laughs> so wait, really? that's, yeah that's like the opposite here they banned home bags and really? yeah and and you have to use the plastic bags while wow, we're we're in a weird world <laughs> <laughs> well, so so this was pre quarantine. So so during the quarantine, they uh, some stores have just been like, yeah, okay, we're going back to plastic bags for now. But not everyone has, and so like, yeah, if you don't bring a home bag or want to buy one of their totes, yeah, you're walking out of there with no bags. So just imagine Evan <laughs> walking oh, walking oh, out of a store with all these <laughs> the <bat> blue limes, <laughs> tall mind you, tall boys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for those that are not in the know, uh, Labatt Blue is a Canadian beer, uh, and it's the equal of like uh, cheap Budweiser or something. Uh, yeah. And then it's, I'm so used to it just being around New York, and it's not – it's an import, but no one really looks at it that way because it's I just do. all over the place. So when I go to anywhere else, when I travel, and I go, can I get a Labatt Blue? And they're like, well, that's going to – like what? they charge it in the import shelf. And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, it's Labatt Blue. I'm like, what, what do you mean? This <laughs> is like uh, – um, so I think I'm going to uh, – Right now, I'm trying out some Arnie Palmy spikes. Uh, it's, I was leaving the gas station today with my arm. I was in the line with like four or five energy drinks stocking up for the week. And I saw those on the shelf. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have me some of that. So I oh my God. I went down the table and I ran back and grabbed those. So now I'm sauntering out in my car like in my shirt. Energy drinks. Like, <laughs> I had the energy drinks. Like, you know, you make like a little shirt pocket. And they're walking out with the Arnold Palmer's. <laughs> Look, I was in Pulaski. Oh no one knows me. All right. Uh, so I'm going to try those. I'm going to uh, trash the White Claws because, uh, you know, uh, we also got a lot of flack for the fact that I'm like, yeah, we're drinking White Claws playing Legion. And apparently that got a lot of people riled up. So oh my God. every day it can be cracking black, folks. Sometimes you just got to drink the cheap stuff. <laughs> Speaking of drinking and playing Legion, a fun thing that we did before quarantine was we had a bunch of our local guys over here. And uh, the losers tables had to play with no shirts, so that's a, that's Polish a fun. Style, I believe we call it yeah, Polish. <laughs> we, we called it Polish style. So uh, the joke for that is in one of the X Wing finals, uh, some of the top like top tables, it was really hot in the room, uh, and uh, I think it was Ben Keller uh, from the crates. He was up there with him. He, they traveled over to Poland for the event, and the Poland guy just like takes off his shirt and starts playing, and he's like, he's like, "What? It's hot!" And he goes, "Okay." So he takes off his shirt. 
It's what everyone calls it, just Polish style when you take off your shirt when you're playing a game. That's incredible. I did not know that. That's yeah, so that's, good. I was I hope you know, in this if Gen Con happens, who knows at this point, or easier yet, uh, maybe next year at Depticon, if it gets too hot and I'm on stream, shirt's coming off. If it gets uh, oh, yeah. if get real sweaty. <laughs> Oh, man. So that's a fun little when quarantine's over, everybody, and you have your friends over to play. Losing table plays Polish, Polish style. <laughs> so, All right. All right. Here we go. Zach, you ready? Uh, Here's your try by trash. What do we got? Try by trash. Try by trash. Try by trash. Dooku. Vader. Commander Vader. Or Commander Luke. Oh, oh man. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm flipping the script. All right. Um, I love it when people flip script. I'm going to try Dooku because he's awesome. Um, I don't play droids like we said, but Dooku is so cool. Such a G, yeah. He really is. Um, we're going to trash Vader and we're going to buy Commander Luke because I specifically bought Cassian and K2 hoping I could buy Commander Luke. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's cool with the new um, uh, the new silhouette rules, right? You can you can pretty much play any version of Luke you want, right? Yep. And and not have to worry about any of the modeling requirements. So you can do my favorite being Hoth Luke uh, in the T forty seven pilot suit. I've got mine painted mm-hmm. up like that. So uh, uh, hey, man, there's a bonus. So you can have uh, maybe a, a a Rogue One looking kind of Luke. Do you yeah, look like got, uh, maybe some outside gear or something? I actually got an LED modded Luke from uh, the gentleman, uh, Manny MacArthur, that was doing our um, objectives for uh, Adepticon. Oh, nice. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to paint that up. Um, but uh, so now I don't have to worry about that beautiful LED lightsaber sticking up over walls. <laughs> ah, dude, for real, though, right? <laughs> I remember one of the first times I played. Um, I kind of like didn't know the like the line of sight rules like I did, but I didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they were like, "Oh yeah, well I can see Luke's lightsaber." I was like, "Oh man." <laughs> yeah, well that's a that's always a feels bad. And so yeah. what we used to do with our group is uh, like even at like the store like our local store events, the guy would go like, uh, "Do you want to say guns count or not?" And we included like lightsabers and stuff in that. And, uh, you know, when both players agree, man, like, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, man, nah. And he goes, cool. And so we used to play like that. So we were kind of playing with the silhouette, yep. like, in, in mind already. Because I always point my guns at the enemy when I'm moving my units. Like, they're shooting that way. Uh, but honestly, the best way to play your Z6s is to turn them into the wall. <laughs> so you get behind a wall and yeah, everybody's pointing away. Or, like, Boba Fett is notorious for his, like, that leaping pistol. So you just turn him into the wall so he doesn't get yep. shot. So we... uh we, the group was already kind of doing that because it was just like, it was always feels bad for the first time somebody didn't understand that and they get shot in the lightsaber, uh, like Vader's hanging out a little bit or something and be like, well, I can see the tip, so uh, all guns fire on that man, and he goes, oh, and he gets dies and it's just like, this t- like you, I feel bad because he didn't know and he feels bad because it's kind of crazy, right? Yeah. Like so the the I'm excited to actually get some games in with the the silhouette system, so kind of at least you can say. When you move your guy, you can put the silhouette down saying, hey, can you see this? And I say, yes or no. And he goes, cool. Right? Like, he's like, all right, he's out. Yep. Okay, good. No, yeah, like, well, I can see his toe or anything like that. So it feels like a lifetime ago. But when I got my one that uh, I don't even think it was a prime at the time. What, what were the other ones called? Uh, uh, RPQ. uh, RPQs. Yeah. Yeah, RPQs, yeah. So when I won my invite to Worlds at the RPQ, the second guy I played didn't know that. Like, didn't know that if you could see the lightsaber or oh, he played oh, Wookiees. He played Wookiees and Luke. Oh, jeez. Uh, and I was like, bad. yeah, and oh. I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. And he's like, no, it's cool. It's the rules. Uh, you know, this is only my third game. And I'm like, oh, yeah, geez. I can see it's sword. I yeah, guess, you know, it's, and you can uh, never and, get rid of that model. Like, yeah, you know? yeah. he keeps the other guy. Like, reaches down, picks up the sword, and puts it above his head. Like after the leader goes down, right? Like it's, oh, it's miserable. So but, it uh, was really interesting. So for those of you listening, if you haven't seen on our Facebook page, I've been kind of uh, posting this progression of. Well, we're doing laser cut silhouettes and we're going to have those for sale very shortly here. Uh, But I've been showing the designs. So I was testing the designs the other day and I got a bunch of like units out. 
I never really thought of the height differences and the size differences of all the units until you put the silhouette behind them. Like I put the silhouette behind my Grievous and I was like, good God, that thing was everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then I put it behind Palpatine. I'm like, he's like a toothpick. And then (laughs) I'm like, and then the B ones are like wicked tall. And I was like, what is going? Like, I was just, I was like, holy crap. Like, (laughs) <laughs> you really don't realize it at all. Like you just don't. No. Like when you posted that picture of the Palpatine, I was like, man, Palp's like shorter than I thought. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, because his head's actually, I think, below the arrow mark, if I remember correctly. And it's just Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing was, uh, the first one I put it behind was a stormtrooper, and the stormtrooper's just about as tall or a little bit taller than the silhouette. And I was like, oh man, I screwed this up. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, this is wrong. Like I did something wrong here. And then, and then I was like, oh, let me put it in front of some other stuff. But yeah, there are so like all the varying heights. So I, I'm just, I'm really excited about the silhouettes. I think it's just an easier way of doing this, but, uh, but anyways, so try by trash. You want to, you want to do another one, Evan? Yeah, sure. All right, Evan, I'm not even going to champ for this one. Cause this one's serious. Oh, try by trash, Evan. Okay. Taco pinwheel. I get food again. Okay. <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi. Yeah, you got drinks before. <laughs> Mississippi pot roast. Okay. Or the best steak. I don't know what your favorite steak is. So oh, just pick you're your just calling it steak. the best steak. Dealer's yeah, choice. whatever. You, Ooh. Yeah, what's what's your favorite steak? First of all, tell us what your favorite steak is. Ooh, um, that's a good question because I haven't had steak in years. Like I just you like steak. a nice. Filet mignon. You like a nice T-bone, a little ribeye, a little flank. What do you like, buddy? Let's see. What do I normally get? Uh, when I go to Outback, I usually get a ribeye. Outback okay. Steakhouse. Right. Uh, and then... Uh, Better be uh, medium rare. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it needs to bleed a little bit. That's All the... Right. That's the uh, the taste. Um, Texas Roadhouse. I normally don't get yeah, steaks. Yeah. By the by the way, anyone listening, if you eat your steak without any pink in the middle, you're you're a monster, complete monster. I, we I I'm complete in agreement <laughs> yeah. with this one. <laughs> yeah. I, if it, it's fine, if it's medium well, I'm fine as long as there's a little pink in there. You you are fine. For those of you that get steak well done, you, you should just jump off your roof right now and just, do us all a favor. Go buy a Jesus. Bridgestone tire, please. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guy. You can order your steak however you want. Uh, um, me. Okay, well, moving moving on. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, how about uh, – um, okay, so – So say- Taco Penwheel, for everybody who doesn't know – Rachel makes this thing called taco pinwheel. It's basically – think about all the shit that goes on nachos, right? So all the cooked stuff goes in the center. And what she does is she takes these Pillsbury croissant, like the pre dough. you know, you pop the, the can and they the, – you know, all the croissants are in there. And she kind of like wraps it around almost like a bunt cake, the taco innards, cooks it, and then puts all the lettuce and cream and sour cream and all that stuff on top of it. That's taco pinwheel. And then Mississippi pot roast is literally the best pot roast you'll ever have in your life. It's a pot roast beef. And then it's got like a, like this ranch seasoning sauce on it and pepperoncinis in there. And like this, and like the, oh my God, the juice. And it comes with a big pile of mashed potatoes. Oh my God. It's the best. All right. Well, after that build up, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, well, uh, Taco if I'm not mistaken, yeah. taco, pin, taco Pinwheel started the Trash Panda, if I'm not mistaken here. It did. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it did. Sent- <laughs> on, sentimental value before you go on. Sentimental <laughs> That's That's value. Because I could eat Taco Pinwheel like every night. Because you can just make it so many different ways. It's uh, Every night can be a different smorgasbord of delicious food. Um, and then buy the steak. And then I think uh, Mississippi Pie has got to go. If I'm gonna, if I could have my Mississippi pot roast, not pie. <laughs> uh, what the hell is Mississippi pie? Uh, but yeah, a uh, a tasty, tasty, well seasoned steak is uh is is my try. But that that taco pinwheel's got to stay. It's it's so good. Uh, I highly recommend both taco pinwheel for all of you out there and Mississippi pot roast. Look them up, make them. They're good. Right. Some something had to get cut, and it's just unfortunate. That's all. Yeah, something had to get. 
Something's had to go, man. Sorry. Them be but... the rules. Them be the rules. All right, Evan. I'll give you a Legion one since you're all sad about food. Oh, right okay. now. Here we go. Okay. It's listen, folks. He he's trying to blame me, but the real thing that's going on is since quarantine, he hasn't had been able to have any of Rachel's food, which is upsetting him to no end. I, <laughs> I know it. She did give me a bunch of candy, so that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We gave him Easter candy. Uh, and okay, so ready? Try by trash. Iden. Padme or Bosk? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Man, that's a good list. Um, I'm going to say by Aiden, uh, because I feel like she opens up some interesting stuff now. Like uh, her tactical advance, her three pip, is her most exciting card to me. The others are good, don't get me wrong. Being able to say, hey, that core trooper doesn't get to go this turn, or uh, uh, the three, five red die blast, or the, hey, I've got sharpshooter two, all great, but. Her three pip, I think, actually brings uh, units like a full squad of scouts back into the game. Because uh, move, move, like, you get steady and uh, um, what is it, tactical one. So move, move, fire with a full set of scouts with uh, two aims. It seems pretty good. So that's what, two, four, six, eight, eight black dice. And let's say you throw a sniper in there, because uh, that's range one to whatever two. So you could have uh, two, four, six, eight, ten black dice. Two, four, yeah, ten black dice. Pierce one. Seems okay, um, especially with two aims to fix it. Um, that's a keeper. Uh, Death Trooper is getting even better. Um, I think Death Troopers are super great. Uh, you pay a lot for them, but they either they have their hard counters like snipers, make them pretty sad, or anything with Pierce. But if they can go unchecked, they can be monsters, and I feel like that's thematically cool because even in like the Mandalorian, they were cool, right? Even though they were just there, but they were like the 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 guys who actually shot stuff, uh, and everybody else kind of missed. So uh, I think that's great. Um, I'm going to try Padme uh, because I think her divulge card is pretty interesting. Um, and having another like, I'm waiting for Anakin to come out, and I hope they have like a teamwork card or something, like a ability on him. That'd be pretty interesting. Like he gets a dodge, and she gets something like that, uh, or an upgrade that they could share. That'd be really neat. Um, Wouldn't it be interesting, just side story note here, I just thought of this. What if he came out like Chewie, where he has each one of his command cards works with a different, like, oh, Rex cool. or Obi-Wan or, Pad, or Padme? That'd be super cool. I think there's a lot of room for that, like, just cool command cards that are super situational. Um, so I'm I'm buying her, I'm sorry, trying her, and then uh, I hate fighting against Bosk, so I'm going to trash him. <laughs> uh, he, he's miserable. Uh, suppressive is just lame. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, reptilian is rampage is also lame. Oh yeah, this is spite. This is spite trashing. Uh, oh, he's perfect. he's great. His actually his command cards are super strong. I think I'm just a little salty that uh, he kind of took <laughs> Boba Fett out of the picture for a yeah. while as uh, bounty hunter of choice. Um, and I think Boba still low key not terrible. Uh, but boss kind of pushed him out. I mean, range four suppressive surge to crit is just too good not to try to use, right? Uh, pretty much any game he can have a use. Uh, where maybe Boba Fett, not always. So, um, but trash, trash boss, just because I I hate playing against him. <laughs> Fair enough. I think Boba makes a big comeback. Actually, but we'll see. I hope yeah. so. I think if he had like one so. more hit point, uh, six, he'd be probably fine again. Five, just oof. Sometimes you just roll blanks on those. Yeah, yeah I, I think jumping e stims and cost really hurt him yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I mean, speed three is going to be real valuable going forward, though. I think. Oh yeah, bombing run. Yeah, bombing run. on just throw it on Boba and just like see you later. <laughs> Jump two, speed three, just whoosh, right down the battlefield. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's true. All right, Zach. I got a real good one for you. Ready? I'm scared. Yeah, go ahead. Try by trash, fleet troopers, Wookies, or the T forty seven. You know what's funny is that like when you put three potentially trashable items together, and now it's hard to figure out which one you want to buy because now you're like, wait a minute, they all do things that I actually do like in the game. Um, oh, this is tough. Um, I think I'm gonna. Bu- this might sound crazy. I'm gonna buy the fleet troopers. Um, I put them on the table last week for the first time in a long time, and I was like, "Wow, I really miss fleet troopers." 
Um, so I'm going to buy them. I'm going to, I'm going to buy them. I start playing them a lot more than I'm used to because you know what? They're a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to try the T47, uh, because that's also a great looking model. It's so much fun. It, uh, speeds down the battlefield as we were just talking with speed three. Um, it's, uh, but, um, and I'm going to have to trash the Wookiees, unfortunately. That's just an unfortunate uh, part of this of this game that is making me cut something I don't want to because I was actually thinking on my ride today uh, to, the, to the grocery store. I was like, oh, man, I haven't put Wookiees on a table in, like, forever. I should play Wookiees. Uh, but unfortunately, the man, the guys from Kashyyyk are just – they're not going to cut it today. <laughs> All right, Evan, last one. Yep. Kit Kat bar. Kit Kat? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. kidding. I'm kidding. I got a Legion. Left or right? Left or right, Kit Kat? (laughs) Yeah, which, yeah, Evan, left or right? Ooh, uh, wait, Kit Kat is four. That's Twix. Oh, that's Twix. Twix is left or right. Here I am trying to make jokes, and I'm I'm doing that wrong. (laughs) Okay, so uh, I'll say uh, second from the left, Kit Kat. You figure out which side's left. You monster! uh, (laughs) You monster! All right. All right. You ready, Evan? Sabine. Operative Vader Rex. Uh, I think I keep Sabine because her one pip's just too good. Um, It's just so crazy. I I am too good. It's so much fun, too. Yeah, and it's, it's when it works, it works. So I've seen it win games, and I've seen it just totally not do anything. And I think that's a cool rebel kind of card where like it's gambling, right? Yeah. To see if this really like takes off. Uh, so it keeps it being uh, her other cards are good too. Her three pip I could give or take. Uh, her two pip is really interesting, being able to uh, uh, say like, hey, you don't get to rally as much. That's an interesting concept. Um, so it keeps it being plus that three speed move, like you said, is really good. And being able to build her in two different ways, like either just a pistol arrow. Or with a sword to try to get some decent like pierce shots in, super cool. Um, keep, I mean, so keep her. Uh, try Rex. Rex is just cool. Um, I like the fact that he's kind of like weak, life wise. Like red, he's pretty much Veers, right? Uh, with one less health. I think Veers has six health, or is he a Veers of five? That uh, I don't remember. Oh uh, man, Veers has five. Yeah, I think, okay, it's so, I think it's uh, Krennic that has six, right? Or is he five as well? I think they're both five. Uh, five. Krennic, yeah. no. Krennic, oh, Krennic is six. six. Because he's got yeah. one save. Veers is five. Aiden is six. Yeah, so uh, uh, I like Rex because he feels killable. But when you play him, when he works, he really works. Like, getting getting more than, like, three shots of uh, Call Me Captain is just such such cash money uh, of that. That's really awesome. So... I like his cards. They help the army. There's, he's like a he's like a interesting fighting commander. Like he gets in the front lines playing. We're not programmed. Everyone gets surge tokens, and it's four unit. It's great, awesome. Um, Vader, uh, he can go. Uh, he's actually he his command cards, the op command cards specifically, are some of Vader current Vader's more interesting cards. Like what? Like Vader's might maybe one of the best one pips in the game. Just saying, like, oh, hey, so this good. this doesn't get to play anymore. Um, or I've definitely seen uh, our, our our local Spencer killed a Palpatine by he had one hit point left. He was Vader's might hit him on top of a building and he died to the to the, the roll. <laughs> to the roll. So he like landed up there in just a pile of crumply bones, uh, which is just really funny to me. Um, but uh, I mean, he is very good. I just prefer the other two. Um, he's still excellent, but uh, trash him just because I haven't played him as much. Um, though I did try him out for a little while. I use uh, my second sister model. Uh, for my op fader, because I just feel like it's fitting that she just descends down from the Reaper. Or no, she she had the uh, tie interceptor, I believe, in the game. Um, but super cool. Uh, I'd say still say trash, just because I don't. The other two just excite me more. Boom. All right. All right. Well, what do you think? Anything else, boys? Um, yeah, I mean, just if you're on the fence about playing Invader League, just go check it out at invaderleague.com. Um, I mean, if you have some questions for it, you could always reach out to me on the Discord. Um, I'm Thrawn, the fifth trooper on there, on the Facebook, uh, Zachary Paul Barry. If you have questions, please ask me. I want this to be for everybody. And um, there is a wait list at the moment, but it does not mean you won't get in. There's drops. There's people that yeah. sign up and they don't end up playing. There's There's so many ways to get in. And just because there's a wait list doesn't mean you won't be able to play. 
uh, we'll find space for you somewhere, I'm sure. And if it makes you feel every better, everybody, I just signed up while we were recording this podcast. Oh, well, there he goes. You might be able to get to beat the great Jay Shalansky. I have, I have this little tear in my eye of happiness. <laughs> oh, God, I hope we're matched first run. That'd be... Oh, oof. God, that would be great. <laughs> I bring that this... Like, uh, that's... Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I'll say I bring this like garbage tier list, and you've got like super like double heavy. I'm like, oh, cool, cool. Garrett, great. <laughs> uh, six hits in the Cad Bane, and he blanks them all. Cool. All right. This is going to go great. Thanks, Cad. <laughs> oh, my God. Speaking of that, I, I actually I one-shot Padme the other night. I felt really bad doing it. Oof. Uh, Oof. But it, it, was something, it was what you were talking about, like playing aggressive Rex can just be fun. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Everyone, stay rad. See you guys. Join us next week for another edition of the Fifth Trooper Podcast. This has been a Fifth Trooper production.